For the majority of patients I see with chronic heartburn, it is due to increased abdominal pressure and an impaired lower esophageal sphincter. Too much pressure exerted on your stomach forces stomach acid to rise up into your esophagus where it doesn't belong. We call this acid reflux. And if a patient is struggling with acid reflux for a long time, they are diagnosed with gastroesophageal reflux disease, or GERD for short. And one of the symptoms of GERD is heartburn. Acid reflux is prevented by a valve which separates your stomach from your esophagus, known as the lower esophageal sphincter. If there is too much pressure exerted on your stomach, or if this valve is impaired, or both, then stomach acid may rise up into the esophagus. There are a ton of home remedies and pharmaceuticals used to treat the symptoms of heartburn, but their effects are only temporary and some of the side effects can be problematic. If you want to cure your heartburn for good, reducing your stomach acid is not the answer. You need stomach acid. You need stomach acid to kill off microorganisms that are in your food. You need stomach acid to absorb your vitamins and minerals. And you need stomach acid to set off a cascade of events that helps you to activate specific digestive enzymes. The answer is to address the cause. Now, there are a number of things which can cause the pressure in your abdomen to increase and each one of these things will need to be addressed in order for treatment to be successful and sustained. Step number one, get rid of excess belly fat. I am talking about visceral fat, the type of fat that surrounds your organs. This may not apply to all of you, but if you have a consistently protruding abdomen and you are overweight, then it is likely due to visceral fat. This can be confirmed with an abdominal ultrasound. Too much fat in the abdominal cavity may be contributing to the overall pressure exerted on your stomach. Now, this may not be the main cause, but it could be a contributing factor. And it is well worth the sacrifice to make changes in your lifestyle to lose this belly fat. In my popular YouTube video, Five Steps to Cure Fatty Liver Disease, I provide some excellent tips on how to burn visceral fat. Now, I put a link at the end of this video and I will remind you again to check that one out after watching this one. Step number two, be aware of the types of foods that cause irritation in your digestive tract. Now, these are different for different people, but in general, these include dairy, fried foods, spicy foods, onions, and alcohol. I am not suggesting you avoid consuming these foods altogether. What I am suggesting, however, is that you reduce the amount of irritating foods you're eating and that you do not eat any of these in combination in a single meal. For example, if you're gonna be drinking alcohol, don't eat barbecue spicy pork ribs with it. Irritating foods may cause the lining of your small intestine and stomach to become inflamed. What that means is those tissues fill with fluid and that fluid contributes to the overall increase in volume in the abdominal cavity, putting more pressure on your stomach. Furthermore, irritating foods can affect the functionality of the lower esophageal sphincter. If that valve is inflamed, it is not gonna function properly and acid from the stomach could more easily escape into the esophagus, causing symptoms of heartburn. As I mentioned earlier, different foods cause irritation in different people. So in order to find which foods are causing your irritation, I recommend you do an elimination diet. So what you will do is you either have some idea of which foods are causing your problem, or you can follow the list I provided and eliminate those foods. What you will do is you will eliminate those foods for two weeks, and if you start to feel better, then you know it's at least one of those foods that is causing your issues. Now you will need to try to figure out which food it was. To do that, you add one of the foods 
back in one at a time for three days in a row and eat a ton of that food to try to elicit a response. And if you do get your heartburn symptoms come back or you get other digestive symptoms from that, then you know that was a problem food. Write it down and then eliminate that food again for however long it takes to you, for you to feel better. Usually a few more days, you'll feel better. And then you try to add in the next food that you uh, initially eliminated and rinse and repeat. And finally, when you're done, you will have a, a list of all the foods that you know from testing are causing your digestive issues. The next steps three, four, and five are all related. So pay close attention to what I'm about to say. Step number three, be mindful that what you eat, when you eat, and how much you eat has a profound impact on the composition of microorganisms inside of your gut. Collectively, these microorganisms are known as your gut microbiome, and they should only occupy the lower part of your small intestine and the entirety of your large intestine. If they colonize too much into the upper part of your small intestine, you will run into problems. There are likely thousands of species of microorganisms and trillions of individuals living out their lives inside of your digestive tract, and they are living off of the food that you eat. So whatever you're eating, you are feeding them. In general, foods that are high in refined sugars and refined flour tend to feed the species of microbes that cause intestinal problems, including intestinal inflammation. On the contrary, foods that are high in soluble fiber tend to feed the healthy organisms. There is a limit to how much calories one can absorb from their food from a single meal, and this varies from person to person. So if you are eating too much calories, whatever your body cannot absorb is going to be feeding your gut microbiome. If certain populations of microorganisms get too big or they're occupying the wrong regions of your digestive tract, then this may elicit an immune response and the result is digestive issues, which we will talk about in steps four and five. A good rule to follow as far as an eating schedule is to only eat two to three meals per day. And if you do snack in between the meals, the snack should only be a high fiber snack. And when you do eat your meals, never eat beyond 80% stomach capacity. Just to give you some perspective, if after eating a meal, you have to loosen your belt buckle or loosen your pants, then you are likely eating well beyond 80% of max capacity. Uh, on, on the other side of things, if you're able to go for a walk after you eat a meal and you don't get stomach cramps, then you're probably okay. One more thing I need to mention about your gut microbiome and heartburn is that there is a bacteria known as Helicobacter pylori or H. pylori, which is known to cause inflammation in your stomach leading to heartburn. So if you have been diagnosed with H. pylori, make sure that you stick around to the end of this video because I will provide a link to one of my other popular YouTube videos on a home remedy for H. pylori. Step number four, chronic constipation is a major contributor to increased abdominal pressure. So what is constipation? Well, I consider constipation to be if you have a bowel movement and it is always just small pieces coming out and when you're done with your bowel movement you feel like there's more left then you are constipated also if you go more than two days without having a bowel movement you are also constipated for your information under optimal conditions a person should be having one to two large bowel movements per day the best way to resolve constipation is to address the health of your gut microbiome because if you have too much of the wrong species or if they're in the wrong place, they are going to be producing irritating chemicals, things that alter the pH and eliciting a chronic immune response in your digestive tract. All of this causes inflammation and makes it harder for the muscles of your intestines to do their job properly. The result is increased inflammation in your intestines, 
a higher uh, volume of feces that's not being eliminated, and increased intestinal gas. Step five, intestinal gas. This is the granddaddy of them all. This is the greatest producer of transient pressure inside of your abdomen and intestinal gas is produced by bacteria and other microorganisms that ferment the food that you eat. Remember what I said earlier, under optimal conditions, the majority of microorganisms in your gut microbiome should be located in the lower part of your small intestine and the entirety of your large intestine. If gas producing species make their way up into the higher parts of your small intestine, then you are gonna have a constant pressure factory producing gas and putting pressure on your stomach. To keep the gas producing microorganisms out of your upper intestine, you need to stop feeding them. Remember what I said earlier, these organisms will thrive on refined sugars and refined flours. So drastically reduce your consumption of these things and practice time-restricted eating so that you are not constantly feeding the wrong species of microbes. If you like this video, consider giving it a thumbs up and make sure that you check out some of these videos that I mentioned earlier. Thank you for watching and we will see you in the next one.